All right, so how does one graph, hey, there's a head in the way. How does one graph thing? What you do is you open an Excel document. Let's open an Excel document. And you got yourself some cells. You're going to love this now. We want to make a data table where time is on the x-axis. So start with time and then distance. Spelled correctly. Okay? And then what you want to do is have zero time. And then the next time, let's say you went every other dot. Every other dot. Yeah. Okay? Then you're going to go 130th. If you went every third dot, 120th. Every fourth dot, Kenny. Right, 115th. All right, one fifth dot, every, every fifth dot, one twelfth, every sixth dot, one tenth. You get the idea. All right, so watch what happens when Excel does this. One over 30. It thinks you've got January 1st down there. No, you didn't mean that. You wanted it to be one thirtieth of a second. So what do you do? You click on it, right click on it, and go to Format Cells. Did you get that? Format Cells. You see under Number, General, Number, Currency, Date. That's what it thinks you're doing. Go to custom. Right down to custom. I'm so excited when I learned this. Look at this. One of the customs is number sign, question mark, question mark, divided by question mark, question mark. That's the one you want. Okay? Click on that one. And then go up here where it says type and actually tweak it. Highlight the denominator and say 30. Huh? Huh? And then hit OK. And ladies and gentlemen, it looks like a mess, but when you type it in again, 1 divided by 30, it actually is, look, 1 30th. Which, look up here, Elena, 0 0.033333333. Isn't that cool? It really is that way. If you drag it with the little cursor in the bottom, down one, you have just copied that formatting for the second one. Change that to 2. 30th, and you got 130th, 230th, see, point zero six 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 repeating. Now, watch this. Who wants to type all those all the way? So what does Jimmy do? He highlights both of them, go to the little X in the corner, drag it down, and it goes all the way to whatever you want, 330th or whatever. Isn't that cool? So 530th is really that. Um, 15th 30th is 0.5 but it stays a fraction. You like it? Okay. What I did was highlight what I wanted to grab. Highlight it. Now obviously I would have want more data points. I want to get at least 10 or 12 of these things. And you guys actually went one, one uh, tenth? One twelfth? It doesn't worry. I mean like you're just going to get a different answer than me anyway. All right. Highlight what you want. If you put the time first and the distance second, it knows this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. If you did it the opposite way, you got to do this weird flipping of the axis, which is a drag. So I highly recommend you put the time first and the distance second. Go over here where it says insert. Insert scatter graph. Scatter graph. Bingo, you got yourself a graph. Oh my goodness, it's a straight line. But if you ever hand something like this in, you don't get any points. So don't stop here and say, oh, this looks like a graph. Here's what you do. Kenny's going to move the chart. If he's got 2003 word, it'll give him a little box right now saying, do you want to save it as part of this group or do you want to put it in a different place? The new Excel, you have to actually hit move chart over here and then it gives you this option box. Go to a new chart, call it distance uh, versus time for cart. Then you should have your name on the top. You know, so it's uh, Nick. Okay? Or whoever's it was. That was Kevin's. Okay? Click it there. Now you have it as a full graph. Paul's still not done. Paul's still not going to get any points for this. You've got to make this look like graph paper. You can't find the slope of this line unless you make it look like graph paper. So, what do you do? Well, there's a button on 2007 called Quick Layout, but the other one doesn't have it. So if you don't have Quick Layout, you actually have to go to Layout and go to Grid Lines and get the primary horizontal grid lines, turn them all on, and the primary vertical and horizontal, turn major and minor on. But if you're working in, um, 
if you're working in uh, Excel 2007, you've got a quick layout box that down here does it for you. Quick layout, and it's the one that's got all the lines on it. Okay? All right, here it goes. Now you have graph paper, but you're still not done. No, Jeremy, you're still not done because look at these dots are not really where I want them to be. I would love to have the dot right on the times, but the times are going by 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.15. They're going by 0.05s. I want them to go by 30th of a second. Wouldn't that be great? Then every dot's got its own major axis. So what do I do? Glad you asked. You right click on the axis and it says format axis. Then over here where it says axis options, major unit, it thinks it's supposed to do 0.05. No, you get it out of automatic and change it to a 30th of a second or whatever you guys are doing. So I'm going to change it to 0 0.033333333333333 because that is a 30th of a second. Did you put a fraction in there? No, I tried. I didn't like it. And then go to number. Ian, see where it says access option? Go down to number. Go down to custom and look what shows up. Question mark, question mark, over 30. Hit close when it's there to format. If you can't find it, you got to put it in. And there it is. Look, 1/30th. The dots right on there. 2/30th. The dots right on there. It ain't pretty. All right. Now you should know how to do the other stuff, which is axis title. You're going to say this is time and in parentheses seconds. And then over here, you're going to change that to uh, displacement and in parentheses centimeters. Right? And you're going to put a title on the lab right up there. You're going to fix the title. I don't know why I can't get there, but you probably could. And you're going to fix and make a title for the lab where it has it really nice. Okay? Nice? Now, here comes the stuff. In class, you guys, listen, don't let Bill Gates do the next thing. The next thing is draw a best fit line. I would really, really, really like it if you did it on your own, okay? People online, there's no way I can get them to do that unless they have a scanner. But you guys, I want you to print this out as it is. Draw yourself a best fit line. That means with a straight edge, hit as many dots as you can, okay? If it's supposed to be a parabola, then you draw your best fit parabola and you try to kind of get the general sense. They actually sell pieces of plastic called French curves to try to get you to help you draw a uh, parabola kind of good. But for a straight line, you get yourself a straight edge, hit as many dots as you can. Why do we do that? Well, Dustin knows that a graph and a best fit line is actually an average that's better than an average. Because if there was one dot that was wrong, Bill Gates would try to get to that dot. You guys would know just ignore that dot and draw a best fit line and totally ignore that bad data and just blame it on, you know, Ian's group or something. All right? So, <laughs> so draw your own best fit line. Listen, draw your own best fit line and then find your own slope of the line. And that's what we're going to do right there, right now, I think. Um, I'm going to try that on the board. Okay? Now, while I got the tape on, let me show you something. This is like your best parent line. Ready? Do as I say, which is print this out, draw your own best fit line, find the slope of your line the way I'm just going to show you in class. Don't do as I'm about to do. Don't do what I do. Ready? Here goes. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to right click, add a trend line, and display the equation right on the chart. So I drew a line, Bill Gates drew the line, and Bill Gates came up with a slope of the line and the slope of the line is 182 centimeters per second the y-intercept is negative 0.6 so it's pretty damn close to hitting the zero zero mark and the R squared tells you that if one was a perfect every single dot lined up this is 0.999 
So the closer you get to one on that R squared thing, the better the line, the dots all made it linear. It really was a linear graph. Okay? Your graph probably won't be that good, but well, Kevin's was. It was pretty close. But the parabola and the next line after that, you do it on your own. It's much better that way. Okay? So do you like that? You like that one thirtieth stuff going on? Okay? Maybe I could put this online in case you need to see that again.